you speak Chinese. 各位朋友, 各位同事, Dear friends, colleagues, I am delighted to join you in person at the Munich Security Conference after three years and meet face to face with friends old and new. I recall vividly how I came here with the Chinese delegation three years ago when COVID-19 just struck. You, Mr. Ischinger, chaired and moderated the Conversation with China session. I presented China's efforts in fighting the virus and urged solidarity among countries in face of the trying times. The international community gave China valuable support and understanding for which we are deeply grateful. Humanity's three-year fight against COVID-19 tells us a simple truth. As President Xi Jinping repeatedly stressed, we are members of one global village, and we belong to one community with a shared future. We can overcome challenges when we stand together. We can win victory when we trust each other. Three years on, the pandemic is contained, but the world is not yet safer. Trust between major countries is lacking. Geopolitical rifts are widening. Unilateralism is rampant. The Cold War mentality is back. New types of security threats from energy, food, climate, biosecurity, and artificial intelligence keep emerging. Standing at a critical juncture of history, human society must not repeat the path of antagonism, division, and confrontation and must not fall into the trap of zero-sum game, war, and conflict. Making the world a safer place is the strong desire of all people, the common responsibility of all countries, and more importantly, the right direction for the advance of our times. For a safer world, the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries must be respected. Power politics and hegemony are a recipe for global instability and do the biggest damage to global peace. Interference in other countries' internal affairs, in whatever name, disregards and defies the basic norms of international relations. Any violation of the One China principle on the Taiwan question, an attempt to create One China, One Taiwan, or Two Chinas, however framed, are a gross infringement on China's territorial integrity and pose real threats to peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. The principle of sovereignty is the cornerstone of the contemporary international order. All countries should abide by the principle in both words and deeds, rather than apply it selectively, still less with double standards. China will resolutely curb acts of separatism and interference to safeguard its sovereignty and territorial integrity. For a safer world, disputes should be peacefully, peacefully resolved through dialogue and consultation. Disagreements and frictions do exist between countries, yet handling them with pressuring, smear campaigns or unilateral sanctions is often counterproductive and may even entail endless trouble. However complex the issue is, dialogue and consultation should not be abandoned. However intense the dispute is, a political resolution should be pursued. However difficult the situation is, peace should be given a chance. China follows a new vision of common, comprehensive, cooperative and sustainable security as put forward by President Xi Jinping. China takes a responsible stance on international disputes based on the merits of each issue and plays a constructive role. On the Ukraine issue, China's position boils down to supporting talks for peace. We will put forth China's position on the political settlement on the Ukraine crisis and stay firm on the side of peace and dialogue. For a safer world, the purposes and principles of the UN Charter should be upheld. The chaos and conflicts plaguing our world today occur because the purposes and principles of the Charter have not been truly observed. 
fanning ideological confrontation and forming exclusionary blocks harms international solidarity and hampers global cooperation. Hyping security threats and stoking tensions undercuts strategic mutual trust and elevates the risk of miscalculation. The pressing need now is for all of us to put the larger interest embodied in the purposes and principles of the UN Charter above one's own lesser interest and work together to oppose Cold War mentality and block confrontation. For a safer world, the key role of development must be harnessed. The world should not be a place where the rich stay rich while the poor remain poor. Efforts should be stepped up in implementing the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The legitimate right to development of all countries, especially developing countries, should be effectively protected. And assistance should be extended to underdeveloped regions to improve people's lives and grow the economy. A holistic approach is needed to address both symptoms and root causes and remove the breeding ground for conflict. The world should not veer off onto the wrong path of protectionism, decoupling and cutting chains. We must firmly reject the attempts to politicize, weaponize and draw ideological lines in the cooperation on trade, science and technology. If security is to be firmly established and endure, people in all countries should get to lead a better life. Making the world a safer place is China's abiding commitment. Last October, the Communist Party of China convened its 20th National Congress. General Secretary Xi Jinping declared that China's central task in the new era and on the new journey is to advance the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts through a Chinese path to modernization. On how to accomplish this modernization of the largest scale in human history, China has given an unequivocal and steadfast answer, keeping to peaceful development. Peaceful development is not an expediency nor diplomatic rhetoric, but a strategic choice informed by a deep grasp of the past, present and future. Looking over the past, China suffered deeply from foreign aggression and expansion in modern times. This country fully appreciates the value of peace and importance of development. Shortly after the founding of New China, we put forward the five principles of peaceful coexistence. Over the past 70 plus years, China has never initiated a war or occupied an inch of foreign land. It is the only country that has put peaceful development in its constitution and the only country among the five nuclear weapon states to pledge no first use of nuclear weapons. China's track record on peace can stand the scrutiny of history, and its peaceful rise is an unprecedented miracle in human history. At present, the top priority for the for China is to pursue high-quality development and deliver a better life for the Chinese people. We know fully well that development is only possible in a peaceful and tranquil international environment. This requires that China lives in peace with other countries and pursues win-win cooperation with the rest of the world. We will always be an advocate for peace development and win-win cooperation and work to deepen and expand global partnerships based on equality, openness and cooperation. Looking to the future, peace and development remain the trend of history and the aspiration of the people. Some people assert that a strong country is bound to seek hegemony and assume that China will walk away from peaceful development as it gets stronger. However, China's own experience shows that the path of peaceful development has worked and worked well. There is no reason for us to discontinue, but every reason to stay the course and come together with more countries in the pursuit of peaceful development. Any increase in China's strength is an increase in the hope of world peace. When all countries pursue peaceful development, the future of humanity will be full of promise. With a keen grasp of the changing world, President Xi Jinping put forward the Global Development Initiative, GDI, and the Global Security Initiative, GSI, in recent years, offering China's proposals and wisdom for advancing peace and development, the two main issues facing humanity. As of now, more than 100 countries and international organizations, including the UN, have expressed support for the two initiatives.
some 70 countries have joined the group of friends of the GDI. I am pleased to announce here that China will be launching a GSI concept paper to lay out a more systematic approach and more practical measures to address global security challenges. We welcome your active participation. Friends, making the world a safer place also hinges on the right choice of both China and Europe. China and Europe are two major forces, markets and civilizations in an increasingly multipolar world. The choices we make have a huge impact on where the world goes. If we choose dialogue and cooperation, block confrontation will not emerge. If we choose peace and stability, a new Cold War will not break out. If we choose openness and win-win, global development and prosperity will have greater hope. Making the right choice is the responsibility we share. This is how we respond to the call of history and the needs of the people. Here in Munich stands the Angel of Peace, a renowned monument marking the end of a war and embodying the wish for lasting peace. Long as the journey is, we will reach our destination if we stay the course. Difficult as the task is, we will get the job done if we keep working at it. Let us all join hands and work together to make the world a safer place. Now, I'm happy to take your questions and exchange views with you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. State Councillor, for your uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you mentioned early on in your remarks, you referred to the war in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, I would like to ask a follow-up question on that, on that. But before I do that, I want to attract your personal attention and that of your delegation and that of all the participants uh, in this hall here today, that we have not more than 30 seconds or a minute from the hall in the building here, an exhibition about Russian war crimes. And I invite everybody, including certainly the Chinese delegation, to uh, take a moment during the day to um, look at these rather gripping photographs and, and videos. Um, I think it's an essential element um, of our proceedings here today. Now, my question is a very simple one, actually. A year ago, when you, when you appeared on the video screen, and you could not be here physically because of the at that time continuing uh, pandemic situation, um, you stated that China respects the territorial integrity, the sovereignty of Ukraine. If I remember correctly, you said just like we respect the territorial integrity of any other member state of the United Nations. Now, that was a remark made four days before the outbreak of the current war of aggression. And my very simple question to you is, now that we have had for 12 months this ongoing war, is China prepared to act on its position that it respects the territorial integrity? And if you are prepared to act, what are you prepared to do? You spoke in your remarks of your willingness to participate in the reflection of how to bring about peace. So could you elaborate a little bit on that? Thank you. Uh, 
energy. Ukraine's energy is not what we want to see. The crisis, the crisis in Ukraine, and we are deeply concerned by the expanded and extended crisis. We are not a party directly concerned, but we did not sit idly by. We do not add f fuel to the fire, and we are against reaping benefits from this crisis. What we have been doing is to facilitate peace talks. We will stand on the side of peace and dialogue. As a matter of fact, since the second day of the crisis, on the 25th of February, President Xi Jinping suggested that Russia and Ukraine sit down together and talk to each other to seek political settlement of the crisis. In Belarus, in Turkey, there were multiple rounds of peace talks. And we saw a framework text on the peaceful resolution of the crisis. However, that was stopped. We did not know why the process was cut short. Some forces might not want to see peace talks to materialize. They don't care about the life and death of Ukrainians, not the harms on Europe. They might have strategic goals larger than Ukraine itself. This warfare must not continue. During his meeting with European leaders, President Xi Jinping said clearly that conflicts and wars produce no winner. Complicated issues cannot be solved by simple, simple solutions. Major country confrontation must be averted. We can state our positions on this stage, but at the same time, we need to think calmly, especially our friends in Europe, about what efforts should be made to stop the warfare, what framework should there be to bring lasting peace to Europe? What role should Europe play to manifest its strategic autonomy? The more difficult situation is we cannot abandon efforts to seek peace. We are approaching the one-year anniversary. China will put forth a position paper on the political settlement of the Ukraine issue. We will reiterate the propositions made by President Xi Jinping in our position paper, including that territorial integrity and sovereignty must be respected, purposes and principles of the UN Charter be observed, legitimate security concerns be taken seriously, and all efforts conducive to the peaceful settlement of the crisis be supported. We will also reiterate that nuclear wars must not be fought and will not be won. We must oppose such an incident. We will call on efforts to oppose attacks on nuclear power stations and nuclear facilities for peaceful use in order to prevent nuclear catastrophe. We must jointly oppose the use of chemical and biological weapons under any circumstances. Our efforts to promote peace will continue. Put simply, we will work with all sides, sustain our efforts, and work until the day peace arrives. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I have collected a couple of
questions, we have very limited time, but among the questions most urgently asked are questions about the relationship between China and the United States. We have all recently witnessed the, what I may call, with your permission, the balloon crisis. Um, and um, my question is a very simple one. Um, are you going to, and is your delegation, going to use the opportunity of this Munich Security Conference platform, which is actually an ideal platform for these types of purposes, to enter into a discussion with those present from the uh, uh, Joe Biden administration um, to return, hopefully, to a somewhat more normal level of discourse between Beijing and Washington, because, of course, you have some larger issues to discuss uh, above and beyond the balloon crisis. But my impression has been that the balloon crisis has stood in the way of returning to a more normal discussion. Please. Uh, it seems that everyone is following very closely the balloon incident and has become a, the center of heated discussions. I'll talk about some facts. We have very clearly told the United States this is an unmanned airship that is civilian in nature. It has limited self-steering capability and veered off course into the United States due to westerly influence. We asked the United States to handle it calmly and professionally based on consultation with the Chinese side. Regrettably, the United States disregards these facts and use advanced fighter jets and downed a balloon with its missiles. This is, I would say, absurd and hysterical. This is a 100% abuse of the use of force. It is a violation of international customary practice in particular, the Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation, we do not accept this. We have launched the march against the United States. Across the globe, there are many balloons in the sky from different countries. Do you want to down each and every one of them? It does not show America is strong. On the contrary, it shows the opposite. We urge the United States not to do such preposterous things simply to divert attention from its domestic problems. We also urge the United States to be more sincere rectifying its wrong approach and undo the negative impact such measures have on China-U.S. relations. Why such sensation? The basic context is misperception of the United States and a strategic miscalculation on the part of the U.S. China's position to the United States is clear and transparent. Mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. These are the principles, the three principles on how we get along with the United States, how two major countries with different systems can get along with each other in the world. What response do we get? The response from the U.S. side is that the U.S. says China is a serious geopolitical challenge, a long-term competitor, and a threat to the United States. This, I would say, is a misguided China perception. With this perception, the United States 
is using all of its means to clamp down and smear China and is co-opting other countries to do the same. China said or stated that it wants to compete with China. We are not afraid of competition, but we want fair and rules-based competition. The United States is not doing it. For instance, the CHIPS Act. This act is 100% protectionism, 100% selfishness, 100% unilateral action. It is in serious violation of the principle of free trade, the rules of WTO. This, by no means, is fair competition. It cannot be farther away from free competition. The U.S. is standing on the opposite side of free trade that has long espoused. This is pretty ironic. In ancient China, we Chinese often say that even if people love benefits, they get it through fair means. Only people with selfish purposes will only get it with this extortion. The United States has only been extorting benefits. We do hope that the U.S. side can view China's development objectively, impartially. Modernization of 1.4 billion people marks progress of humanity. I don't understand why the U.S. is stopping this process. We hope the U.S. side would take a pragmatic and proactive to attitude towards China and work together with China to return our bilateral ties to a, to a track of sound development. This not only meets the benefit of our two countries, but also of the international community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the team signals to me that our time is already up. But uh, I, I don't think, sir, that this uh, discussion would be uh, uh, complete if we didn't have at least one final minute, we don't have more time than that, for you to reassure this audience that a military escalation over the Taiwan issue is not imminent. Briefly assure the audience that Taiwan is part of Chinese territory. It is never, it has never been a country, and it will not be a country in the future. This is the status quo of the Taiwan question. It is not China who wants to change the status quo, but Taiwan separatist forces on the island. Taiwan independence forces undermines peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. That is why we must oppose Taiwan independence and Taiwan separatism. We must observe one China principle. This is also a consensus of the international community. We reiterate the importance of respecting sovereignty and territorial integrity. This is good. We hope that on China, sovereignty and territorial integrity should also be respected because Taiwan separatist forces are threatening our sovereignty and territorial integrity. We don't hope to see double standards on this issue of major significance. That is my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a real privilege to have you on stage here again. Do come again next year if you can. Thank you.